Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with the Arma 3 Alpha Test, and today we're going to take a look at some of the video options within the game to perhaps improve your frame rate and gameplay experience. Uh, what I'm going to suggest is that you not just copy my settings because it's going to be different for everybody's system. Everybody's going to have a different set of hardware and or brands that may react differently to this game. For example, an AMD video card might treat this game differently than an NVIDIA video card. Uh, as far as I know, typically ARMA titles run a little bit better on NVIDIA hardware as they're mostly programmed with NVIDIA in mind. I don't know if that's changed since ARMA 2, but uh, we'll have to find out over time. I am running a GTX 680 Superclock Plus from EVGA. You can see that as well as the other specs in the description below for my current system. So again, don't just copy what I'm using unless you happen to have exactly the same uh, hardware. Things are always subject to change, drivers, as well as uh, various other software, your OS, who knows, uh, things may have an effect on your overall performance. Now, also with that said, this is alpha, guys. It's an alpha test. This is not the polished phase of the game. Uh, that happens later on, going into beta and then into the final product. So right now, we're worried about getting, you know, core gameplay mechanics working and running properly. So keep that in mind. Don't expect this to run amazing right out the gate. In fact, it runs pretty dang good uh, considering it's an alpha compared to other titles that uh, <laughs> won't even be able to run anywhere near as good as this one does and look as good. So be thankful for that, my friends. So right off the bat, we're going to go into the editor. I know you're thinking, what about the options? No, nope, we're going into the editor. Listen to me, I know best. What we want to do is drop in a character into the world in a stress-free, non-combat environment so that we can check our settings live without any distractions. Then later on, what you'll want to do is, of course, play the game normally and see how it affects your frame rate. So right off the bat, we've got the Island of Stratus here and a mouse cursor within the map editor. Don't worry, you don't need to know anything advanced. It's going to be real simple to do this. Just follow my commands and you'll be good to go. What we want to do is find an area that has a mixture of terrain, perhaps solid objects, uh, maybe some trees, foliage, some hillside cover and things like that, so that we can get a good idea of how things uh, look with, with our settings. So what we're going to do is take our cursor, just double click. That's it. Don't touch anything. Just hit OK. There's your troop. Now we're going to go up here and we're going to hit preview. Simple as that. You can also use this if you just want to play around with your settings, your controls, your mouse, whatever. Uh, remap your keys. Just get into an environment where you don't have to fight things. Maybe you just want to do a little bit of exploring uh, and make you know some maps for your friends to hang out and do whatever. There you go. Simple as that. So here we are where we dropped our character. You can go ahead and hit M and take a look at the map, and you'll see that that's where we're at here. A little back out of that. Okay, back on our feet weapon at the ready so now we kind of want to just double check our location and see you know uh, find maybe a good environment that might have uh, again a mixture of things because I just dropped myself in a, in a spot that I thought might be uh, okay for, for what we need to do here but right now we have let's see eh, there's a good mixture of things here I think I'm actually gonna go into this little uh, obstacle course because we've got things that would work well for, um, you know, checking anti-aliasing properties. So what I'm actually going to do is get a view of, of the background there. We want that hillside, and this also allows us to take a look at this thing here so we can check anti-aliasing. We've also got the, the light post over there as well. But this is fine. Gun at the ready. We're going to hit Escape and go into Options and Video. And here we are with our, our basic overall settings. Uh, for the most part, Arma 3 is going to automatically detect what it thinks is best for you. Those defaults aren't necessarily what you want to stick with because even in my case, it shows some defaults that gave me a pretty rough frame rate. It was playable, but it really wasn't too uh, up to my spec. So uh, here you're going to also see that there's going to be a rendering resolution versus uh, this. Uh, uh, I think this is mostly your user interface resolution. So for the most part, I would leave this be. Uh, this is just this was detected fine for me. There shouldn't be any issues there unless you just prefer a larger 
interface. I was fine with the small setting there. But really, everything here should be pretty much good to go, except for a couple of crucial elements here. Now, keep in mind that this option here, the overall visibility, aka the draw distance, is probably the biggest performance hit out of every setting we're going to look at, because this is what's controlling what you see in the background. For example, if we increase this, you can see that uh, my background becomes a bit more clearer. We can start to see more detail in, in, that, in that mountain range there. So if we go back to kind of what I had it around, um, let's see, let's say I had it at, I had it at like 1700 or something like that. But we'll just hit OK and go back there. And we can even get a, a different look here to kind of see some of the mountains in the background. See, let's say that uh, that mountain range back there if we go back into the options and go into video and then mess with that again, see we can lower things and see how things start to disappear. We increase things at the distance, things become more detailed. Now, you might even want to drop yourself in on a location where you have more of a, uh, a mountainside or bird's eye view so you can look down and see more of the draw distance. But again, this is going to give you an idea of what this is doing. Now, if I, you know, if I turn this all the way down, yeah, my performance and frame rate is going to go through the roof. This is the big killer of, of this title as it was in Arma 2. You're going to want to play around with it. For example, the game had defaulted me at about 3,000 plus. I didn't find that I needed that. So I was able to, as you can see, it kind of gives you a bit more, it's like fogging in a way. I found that for me, the 1700 range was fine. I think that if I were to have a, uh, a bit better processor or maybe an even beefier video card, that in the future I can turn this up and, and enjoy it a bit more. Uh, so there's that one. That's crucial. Definitely play around with this one. You'll find your frame rate fly uh, once you mess with that and probably bring it down a bit. Don't necessarily be stubborn and try to increase your draw distance because, again, when you're in a firefight, unless you're like a, a extremely long-range sniper, you're not even going to really need all that half the time anyway. So just get it to something that you feel looks decent. I could probably, you know, you know, bring this up a little bit more even to, you know, 2,000. Uh, also keep in mind that things are going to change if you're in a firefight. When you're in this map editor world where there's no AI messing about, there's no scripted events or anything going on, the performance is going to be higher than when you're in a firefight where there's a lot of uh, uh, collision going on or particle effects, explosions, and tracers going on. So that's why I say set your things here to look at it in a stress-free zone, but then go into the game and play it and see how they run and then tweak from there. But going here, you can also see if you hover over things, it gives you a brief description uh, object drawing distance affected by overall visibility. So what you do here is affected by this as well. Uh, you can see here this is this is basically bringing some of the trees out uh, or in effect. So play around with that again. You kind of want it at something that looks you know decent there. And um, and then of course you know I think well I don't even remember what I had this at. I don't know, but from what I can tell here, I can see those trees in the distance there. So that looks fine. That seems all right. Uh, shadows, I think by default for me, we're at about 100. Uh, they're kind of hard to see. You can see some movement in this tree here. Uh, you might want to move around to a location that, that shows it a little bit differently. Uh, for example, if we hit cancel on that, go back out and maybe get to somewhere where we can see things on the ground. So kind of at this point, I'm going to be paying attention to the shadows. Uh, down there, maybe even. So I'm going to hit escape, go into options again, video, and mess with the shadows. So again, mostly you see them on the trees. You see them disappearing from the bottom when I turn them all the way down. It's really the detail uh, of, of the shadows and, the, and the, the drawing distance of those shadows. So for me, again, I don't know how much it's really going to affect some of the performance from going from 100 to 80. Uh, but, you know, it still seems to look good and it seems to run fine there. Again, some of these things might be personal preference. What I like might be different than what you like, and you're going to want to play with what runs on your system as well as what looks good to your eye. So that's that. Uh, next, we're going to go into rendering because I think everything else uh, was pretty much fine there. Yeah, so, all right. Now, rendering resolution, again, is going to be typically the maximum that your display can support. Mine is a 1920 by 1080. Uh, uh, LG television at 60 hertz uh, refresh rate. You can see that this game will support the 2K plus resolutions. Uh, not many of you have displays that can handle that. If you do, good on you. 
uh, that may affect some of the settings that we're going to change in, in a bit here as well. But uh, there's that. Typically, this is going to be uh, fine at its default spec. So next thing to look at, also very important in any video game, vertical synchronization, which is going to try to match up your uh, displays. It's going to try to match your frame rate to your display's refresh rate. And that's going to be 60 hertz, meaning that you'll be able to get a maximum of, of 60 frames per second and nothing any higher. But you might also uh, get a lower frame rate. And in most cases, you just want to have this off because unless you have a beefy system that's always getting 60 frames or higher and never, ever dropping below 60, unless you have that, you're going to want this off. If you have that, if you've got like dual SLI, GTX 680s, NVIDIA Titan, or a GTX 690, and a good processor that's, you know, getting the job done for you and you have no problems, then, you know, play with that. But I've noticed that the screen tearing in this game doesn't seem too bad. It may also depend on your display. So again, play around with what you feel. But I recommend that you disable this on almost every video game you ever play on the PC. So there's that. Uh, moving right along to the next most important thing within gaming today usually is, is uh, in regards to some of the anti-aliasing features. Uh, in, in some games, you have a mixture of uh, aliasing options like here. Uh, in others, you might just have one selection. For example, uh, you might just see something that says either choose basic anti-aliasing or choose your FXAA. But here you have both. So you've got General aliasing, which is sharpness of object edges, uh, getting rid of jaggies and whatnot. So we want to pay attention to the, the straight lines on objects and whatnot. So what we're going to do is actually move over to something that better demonstrates that. So again, feel free to do a lot of running around and take a look. So we want to look at some of the, the lines uh, of this uh, obstacle course as well as my rifle here. So let's do that. Video rendering. So... By default, I go with just the two times AA. It seems fine. You can see that it switches over. It's really hard to tell uh, too much of the difference there because I also have the FXAA on. But again, play with whatever you feel you uh, need. Um, some people don't care about jaggies. Some people are fine with them. Uh, as long as they've got their resolution, they're okay. I have a friend who actually really just doesn't care about that very much. So he just goes with whatever the default is. But uh, on the flip side, myself and my, a couple of my other friends were like, you know, really picky about jagged lines and we hate them. And uh, we do prefer having some anti-aliasing enabled. But again, play with that a little bit more. Uh, this can uh, impact your performance uh, to certain degrees, of course, also depending on your hardware. So for me, I find that two times uh, standard AA is fine there. But then we're going to move along to the post-processing anti-aliasing which I'm not going to get really too in-depth with because, as you can see here, there are two different versions. There's FXAA and the newer SMAA, and there are various descriptions already online via Wikipedias and hardware websites that will tell you some of the differences. Uh, there is also a newer form of AA called TXAA, which can be found in Crisis 3, as well as Call of Duty on the PC. And... Um, I actually find that to be the best, but it is a little rough on, on, on performance at times, so... Again, depends on your hardware. So here, you can see that we've got some options to look at. Now, this is the anti-aliasing that's going to uh, that's going to work with your your post-processing uh, enhancements, if you will. So, I've read a bunch of different descriptions. Some people say that SMAA is the way to go. Uh, some say that FXAA is the way to go. If we're talking about Skyrim, for example, which also has similar options, it would seem that SMAA is the way to go and gives you a, a sharper picture. Uh, if I disable it, what I want you to kind of pay attention to here is, again, some sharp lines. Pay attention to the rails on my rifle. So right now we're disabled. Uh, here, if I go to FXAA Ultra, you can see that things sharpened up a little bit. And uh, keep in mind that we are looking at this on YouTube. So it's a still image. So maybe you can tell, maybe you can't. I apologize if not. Uh, YouTube's compression might have an issue there. But so there's ultra disabled. And then ultra again. It seems to sharpen a couple of things up there. Now, if we go to SMAA ultra, things seem to get actually a little blurrier. Whereas in the guide that I had read in regards to Skyrim, 
it was the other way around, where FXAA was blurrier and SMAA was actually sharper. So it's interesting to see the differences here in this game and how it's handled. Now, I know that it is on a per game basis. For example, this game might handle its AAs different than Skyrim's or Crisis. So you're gonna have to play it by ear, or perhaps maybe it's a bug and the options are labeled incorrectly. I have no idea, but in this case, in my opinion, uh, FXAA actually looks better. I'm told also that SMAA actually runs a little bit better as well, but from my tests, uh, I really hadn't noticed that much of a performance drop between the two. Uh, all I can say is this looks a little blurrier to my eye, and this looks a little sharper. So again, what looks better to you? What do you prefer? Maybe you don't even want it on at all. I don't know, but what I'm gonna do for now is uh, just put it at FXAA high, because uh, that's what my eye seems to enjoy a bit more. So that's that. Now, this next option, uh, ATOC or alpha to coverage, is kind of like the uh, multi-sampling or, or anti-aliasing that you're going to get on, on shrubbery and grass and weeds and things like that. But what we need to do is actually get to an area that better showcases that. We can see most of it there. I guess that's actually fine, but... This will work here outside, so we got some bushes and things like that as well. Uh, what we're going to do is go into Options once again, Video, Rendering, and if you pay attention to, again, the grass and foliage and things like that, we disable that. You can see how things just got sharper, a little jaggier. It's, it's hard to tell unless you're really up close to like a, a twig or a leaf and things like that, but once we hit this, we'll see everything you get a little bit more of a, of a blur or, or it, it seems to smoothen things out a bit more. Uh, you, can, you can choose to do it uh, per, see it, it's interesting the options they have here. They have it just on the grass. It looks like a few things disappeared there. Arma 2 trees, Arma 2 trees plus grass. So I'm not really too sure uh, what they're talking about there, but I just did everything. And it doesn't really seem to affect performance too much, at least for me but I'm just gonna keep that on all trees plus grass because it seems to look better to my eye. Again, we're, we're smoothening, uh, smoothing out things. <laughs> I'm getting a little tongue tied here. And, and really you can kind of tell like if you scope in uh, to, to like, you know, this, this little piece of whatever this is, this little uh, type of grass or weed or whatever it is, you can kind of see that there's, there's not really that much in regards to uh, jaggies. So I guess like if we look at this here, these, these leaves on these trees here, and we go back into options, maybe this will show us. I'm not sure, so I'm gonna see. This is kind of an experiment for myself. If I disable it, you see that? You see that change that we got there? It seemed to get a little sharper, actually, but, uh, and it's, it's actually uh, messing around with the edges there. So, you know, play with it. What, what actually looks better to you? Go into disabled, and it's, because we're running at a higher resolution, it's not that big of a deal. But, you know, with it there, it seems to blur it a little bit more or add some enhancements to the edges. But that's an example of what that's going to do for you. So, you know, play by ear, uh, whatever your eye prefers. So there's that. And let's get back out of the scope. Now, keep in mind that you can also hit enter on your number pad and get yourself into a third person mode so that you can take a look at your soldier and, and, and see some of those options in effect as well in regards to the anti-aliasing and especially the, the texture options once we get into that. But uh, for now, what we're gonna do is go back to our little area here by the obstacle course and look at the mountain. So, and then we'll stay in third person, why not? So there's that, options, video, back to rendering. So uh, you can also see some of the differences here. Uh, we were talking about the FXAA disabling. You can look at the SMA, which for me, I see even on the character, it looks blurrier to me. So I'm going to stick to FXAA, which again, I don't know if you can tell through the video quality, but it seems sharper to me. Uh, and I actually kind of prefer that right now. Uh, so post processes here, again, it says post processes quality level, depth of field, blur. Uh, each game, again, may handle this a little differently. But for those of you that don't know, if you're familiar with photography, depth of field, let's say you have a picture of a flower and the flower is perfectly crisp and sharp and in focus. That's the center of attention. Behind it, the background is blurry. You're not gonna be paying attention to that. 
that's your kind of uh, an example of depth of field at work. So the game wants to try to do that as well. It's kind of hard to see it at play here. Uh, if we go to very high, uh, we might want to change. Let's maybe go into like this type of a view and see if, if we can notice it a little bit more. Again, it seems that some of the armor options are very subtle. Um, if we go to disable, you can actually see there, that was actually a big difference. It seemed to almost add a, a fog to it in, in a way there. So if we go from disabled to very high, you're getting kind of like that soft touch to, to the background, to things that aren't necessarily uh, the center of attention. Uh, and once again, we can look at it disabled and very high. I actually had mine, I think, at normal, which, as you can see, again, going from, if we went to very high to normal it didn't really seem to change all that much so uh you know might not even be worth some of the higher end settings but that's that again whatever you prefer uh hdr quality high dynamic range lighting you can see here if we go to low you can see the changes in, in lighting there again it depends on what you prefer it seems to um change quite a bit actually there uh, this feels like a bit softer um you know play around with it and then we go into anastropic filtering, which in this case, I want to get a look at some of the terrain here. So here we're actually going to pay attention to the environment, the ground texture here. So uh, mostly like the, the rocks and, and the dirt is what we're actually looking at. So you can see that. And then I'm going to go into, actually, no, I'm going to stay third person for this because this will be a good view. Go back in. And so anastropic filtering as you can see here by their description, quality of textured surfaces at shallow angles and in the distance. Now, if I disable this, see how this all got blurry, the textures on the ground, because we're looking at it at an angle. The closer you are to the texture, the better it's gonna look. This is controlling how good it looks as you're going into the distance at that angle. So now if we go back to ultra or up to ultra, you can see that this becomes a lot sharper in the ground detail. And I don't think you need ultra. If you look at very high and ultra, I don't see any changes. If we look at high, I still really don't see any changes. Uh, it's not until you disable it or stay in a, in a low. If you go into low, there's some now high, there's a change from that very high. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at very high. That seems fine. Uh, no big deal there. Again, a lot of these options, are you going to notice them when you're in a firefight? Probably not. So it really depends on what you feel is necessary. So that's that. Uh, those are some of the more important things. Now we're going to go to this new feature, Picture in Picture. Uh, I don't have a vehicle ready. I could spawn one in, of course, if I wanted to. But um, in regards to the vehicles, we have cameras uh, at the gunner position, for example, that allows you to man the gun without sticking your head up on top of the vehicle, exposing yourself to enemy fire. So this is actually the quality of the mirrors, cockpit screens, for example, and the, the little LCDs within the vehicles. And this, you know, play it by ear. I'm not sure how much this actually affects the performance of the game. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave it at high, and I'll probably have to play with that a little bit later. But, um, you know, so far, it doesn't seem like such a huge deal. So that depends on what you need to see on that display. But uh, dynamic lighting, of course, I don't think we're going to be able to see too many of the differences here in this uh, daylight situation. That might be something better when we're talking about uh, a nighttime environment when you're dealing with different lights uh, perhaps from uh, a light uh, post or flashlights and things like that um, the dynamic changing of lights over the environment so the amount of them may you know with when that increases you're looking at you know a performance strain and whatnot so again play with that See how it goes, perhaps set the, the day-night cycle and maybe get to an environment that has different lighting set up. Uh, I don't know if we can find that within the editor without setting things up manually, but there's that. So now uh, you do have some overall quality options here. And well, actually the overall quality is custom. You can set things based on a standard here. I don't recommend touching that. We're just gonna leave it at custom because we're, we're modifying everything manually. I have everything set at very high and high for shadow quality, which is the maximum there. You can see that if, if we look at some of these shadows here, I guess that's low, high, smoothening out some of the, the shadows. And there's just shadows disabled in general, which of course could kick up your frame rate quite a bit. But you can even see here, seeing this corner here, how if we went to low, actually interesting. Actually interesting, Check, take a look at this, how our shadows almost became more jagged at high versus low where they seem 
a bit sharper. Now, if we take a look at that as well over there, interesting. I think it really depends on the angle we're at. So let's investigate this. Let's uh, go into this mode here. So here it, it appears pretty sharp and we can even see my shadow. So there's some good shadow uh, options there. So let's go back into that. And then we're gonna go obviously disabled, low. I don't see much of a difference at this angle. At standard, it looks terrible. And then high, it actually seems worse for some reason. And then low seems extremely sharp. I believe what it's trying to do is soften the shadows uh, versus giving you extremely sharp shadows, which is, which is not very realistic. But you'll also notice that if we hit OK and we move around, that it, that it may look different from, from other angles. So again, uh, I'm not a huge shadow expert. Uh, in, in, in older games, shadows were always a big hit on, on performance. So you might want to play around with that. Uh, we can see here, just kind of looking how, how the, the shadows change as we, as we move around here. Now let's, for curiosity's sake, go into video again and um, put it back on low, which seems to make things really sharp. And this just seems to be sharp from most all angles. So, you know, it kind of depends what you want there. And we can even increase the depth of, uh, excuse me, not the depth of field, but the field of view with the... Uh, number pad. But again, shadows at low are very, very sharp. And in, in some cases that may seem unrealistic. It just depends on what you enjoy. So if we go back in options, video, and standard, or even high, it seems to maybe even uh, smoothen things a bit there, or maybe I'm just seeing things and it looks the same. I don't know. <laughs> the differences there are kind of strange even to my eye, but uh, play around with it and, and see if you can do some research yourself on that one. But um, now we go to quality. So anyway, we skipped over to shadows for a little bit there, but uh, everything can go to ultra except for shadows. Um, I have everything on very high, just like I did in Arma 2, because I felt that there wasn't that much of a difference between very high and ultra, at least not one that my eye immediately noticed. So therefore, I would say that ultra is not necessary. And again, it's probably something you're not going to notice when you're in a, uh, a hectic firefight. So very high at the maximum is the way to go. Texture quality, you'll be able to look at on your soldier here, as well as the terrain and, and see the differences there. I'm not really going to play around with it too much because it does have to, that option actually does have to reload the level. Um, objects quality here, again, you can see uh, geometry quality and amount of objects in the scene. So perhaps uh, debris or uh, different um, pieces of rubble, things like that. Terrain quality here. Smoothness of the terrain, surface, and edges. Cloud, we got to have, yeah, we got our very high clouds there. So that's good. Uh, I love the clouds, particles, of course. Uh, you throw a grenade, there's going to be a particle effect, things like that. I found for me, very high is, is good. But as I've said over and over and over again, you have to play with your system settings, look at your hardware, and see what works for you. If you want to start with my settings, if you think, oh man, Side Strafe's game looks fantastic, I want to I want to duplicate that. Start with my settings, but then if it doesn't run well, you're going to have to work uh, your way back down. Or if it runs amazing, maybe you can you know work your way up. Uh, it really just depends on what you've got going on there. Um, but I think that about covers it. Again, you can set the overall quality, was, which is going to affect everything within uh, the uh, all the options that we looked at, I believe. You can also auto-detect, but I do not recommend that. Please just go through and manually set things up and look at your system and, and think about what's going to run best for your hardware. And that is that there. Again, you can feel free to use different parts of the world. You can go back out and pick a new location if you want uh, within the map editor in order to perhaps get an idea of uh, the environment changes. 
uh, you can, you know, go through the game, just, you know, take a couple of shots with your rifle and just get a feel for your controls here if you want. And just practice around with the, the different settings within the game. You know, take a look at the animations, mess with your controls, do all the things that you normally can't do in a, in a live fire exercise. So uh, this is definitely the best way to do it. And I found that my performance increased tenfold when I, when I just went through manually and, and edited my options. Keep in mind, once again, reminder number one, it's alpha. Number two, uh, this game is a good game, which means it's designed to scale over the years. You know, uh, five years from now, this game is still going to look good. Arma 2, I believe, was released in 2009. Correct me if I'm wrong. It still looks pretty good, you know? I mean, you know, some of the player models are kind of weak in certain areas, but generally the terrain, the environments look phenomenal. And that's because they built a, a game engine that was scalable, something that's going to look amazing on next-gen hardware. And this game looks great now, is capable of uh, running very well on, on awesome hardware, but... Uh, yeah, it's 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 not gonna uh, run if you have a lower spec system, and and there's a lot of you that are coming from the the, the console uh, generation perhaps, and you're thinking, well, my games run good on a console, but PC games they don't they don't run so well, and it's not even that. It's that on the PC you have options, on the console you don't get these options. On the console you only get maybe brightness calibration usually and, and screen adjustment adjustment uh, here you have all these options that are not available to you if I were to change my settings to the settings that you have on Call of Duty on the Xbox 360 then this game would run flawlessly I might get well over 60 into 100 frames per second that would mean running this at 720p that would mean having way lower resolution textures that would mean not having any anti-aliasing at all that's what you have to realize. Sure, things run fine on your console system because the game is preset to run uh, to that hardware. On the PC, it's a little bit different. It's more advanced. You're looking at running the game based on your specific system. That's why you have options. That's why they're called the options. It's optional. And that's why people need to stop uh, you know, ranting about, hey, I just got this thing, it runs like crap, it's too taxing on my system. No, it's not. You just need to find the right settings for your hardware and, and not deter others from getting into this game just because you can't run it. There's a lot of enthusiasts out there that want to, you know, spend their paycheck on hardware. Well, more power to you. Run the game at its finest. But for those of you that maybe don't have the budget, it's not your fault. You just have what's available to you. That's why the options are there. Lower the settings. And then one day when you do upgrade, you've got the, the, the chance to change them as well. So that is that. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I think I've covered most of the video settings. There are, of course, other options in regards to audio and whatnot. And really, they're pretty basic and self-explanatory. Sound sources may uh, increase or decrease your performance based on those things as well. But there's nothing really too... Uh, advanced in regards to their audio, which is actually kind of unfortunate. I wish they would work on that a bit more, but that's that. And I, I really hope that this has been helpful to you. Uh, please share this video and pass the word along in, in regards to uh, teaching people how to improve their frame rate, because I feel a lot of people are just not taking the time to educate themselves. And there's a lot of new PC gamers out there that, uh, that don't understand that these options are available. And many of you are probably just running on the, the default recommendations from the game. And that's mistake number one. You never want to do that in any video game. Uh, you'll just notice uh, an increase in performance tenfold usually in, in most titles. But ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you so very much for joining me. I will see you on the next one.